Today we're going to be taking a look back at macOS High Sierra, and we'll be seeing how usable it is in 2024, along with the mixture of experimenting around with the High Sierra. And we'll even see how well it performs, and we'll also run some really nice applications and even a few games on it, to see how well it performs on this 2016 MacBook Pro. Just to clarify, this is the MacBook Pro 2016 with the touch bar and the four Thunderbolt ports. Released on September the 25th, 2017, macOS High Sierra brought in loads of new features such as APFS, which is a whole new file system made by Apple that aimed to fix issues from HFS. It was also designed with flash memory in mind. There were also things that came out with High Sierra such as Metal 2, HEVC slash H.265 and the updated Photos app. Now first things first, let's actually discuss the things that aren't present in macOS High Sierra that might annoy you. Things such as Dark Mode and Sidecar aren't in macOS High Sierra, and to be honest, I don't really mind the lack of Sidecar, but it's definitely something to keep in mind. Apps like Modern Photoshop and DaVinci Resolve and pretty much every web browser will not work on here. Now as for the web browser, Safari has an outdated WebKit version, so Google Sites will load in mobile view. Apple services like Apple Arcade won't be present in the App Store for High Sierra. And Apple Music does work in iTunes as far as I know, but there is no lossless or Dolby Atmos support. And in general, app compatibility for High Sierra is just pretty bad right now. Now that we have that out of the way, let's actually start using High Sierra. So I recently found a copy of Final Cut Pro that still supports High Sierra. So we're going to load some footage into it and we'll see how it performs in macOS High Sierra. So to start things off with this video, I'm going to go ahead and launch Final Cut Pro. And um, I've got these two folders here. So I recently went on a road trip and I got some footage in 1080p 30 H.264 and 4K 30 in H.264 and they're both in these folders. So I'm going to go ahead and create a new project and I'll just name it YouTube 2. Okay, and um, I'll keep it 1080p HD 30. Right. Starting off with 1080, I'm going to go ahead and drag these three clips. And um, so far, I am really surprised. The overall performance of this is really smooth. The scrub before this is really buttery, like, I can like really easily scrub through this timeline. And there is absolutely no stuttering with playback, I'll just show you guys. Absolutely none. Whatsoever. And keep in mind, we also have these touch bar controls, which I'm really looking forward to using when we edit this video. So let's go ahead and start editing this. Okay, so we'll start off with the beginning with this scene of the flowers. It's very short. Okay, and then I'll get my razor tool out and I'll cut this. And then I'll cut this part here and I'll delete this. Now my only problem with this editor is that the timeline is a little bit finicky to use. It's kind of like similar to how uh, DaVinci Resolve's timeline is, it's just really um, cluttered and it can get very messy sometimes. I'll cut the part right before I start moving on to the other clip here. Okay, and then I end it off with this clip. So I'll delete that and there we go, that's the first clip edited. Right now, as for the second clip, I don't think it actually needs any editing, and um, same goes with the last clip, so I think we'll leave it as is. Alright, and I'll just put the volume down for all of these um, clips. Alright, and we're done. So let's go ahead and export this. So I'll press the share button, and then I'll start um, exporting a master file. Alright, next, and continue, and I'll let it export. So I'm currently just timing this right now. It's doing it very quickly. It's um, rendering very fast. Okay. And it finished that in 22 seconds. And um, here's the final output.
so I've got these four clips recorded at 4k 30 let's drag them in I think the same applies for this as well it's very smooth um, oh it's a little bit stuttery just a little bit it's perfectly fine though okay so let's go ahead and get this edited too all right as you can see no issues playing back the video whatsoever so I'll go ahead and cut this okay and then our new clip starts there okay and then I'll cut that and then a new clip starts here all right and then I'll cut that and um, this clip is unnecessary so we'll delete that okay so this footage here um, I started to record um, cars, so I'll drag this at the end, and um, that should play. Um, so it's the same as last time. Uh, this the clips with the trees don't actually need any editing, so I'll essentially just leave it as is. Okay, and I think this should be ready for export. So I'll go ahead and export as the master file. Next. I'll name this YouTube free. Okay. All right, so I'm just timing this and um, it's a little more slower than last time, but um, it's a reasonable render time. Okay, and it's done. So in total, that took 42 seconds to export 4K30 footage. So um, here's the output. Next up, we're going to try out some games. So I've got Half-Life 2 Episode 1 and Minecraft installed. Now, um, this is something I should actually mention. Both of these games are going to be ending support soon for macOS High Sierra. Steam might still run, but I'm not entirely too sure. Only a few, like a very small amount of games will work on Steam. And that's pretty much the majority of, um, you know, older Valve games. So I'm going to go ahead and launch Minecraft first, and then we'll try out Half-Life. As you can see as well, um, it's already reporting that Mojang is ending support for this Minecraft launcher for macOS versions 10.11, 10.12, 13, and 14. And uh, macOS Catalina is thankfully still supported, so. And in this case, I'll be playing Minecraft 1.13.2. I think it's the sweet spot for this. If you guys have watched my um, 2014 MacBook Air review, I said that 1.12.2 um, was the sweet spot for that MacBook. I believe 1.13.2 13.2 to any modern Minecraft version on this, a 2060 MacBook Pro is perfectly fine, but I feel like 1.13 is the best, so we'll go ahead and play that instead. Alright, and starting off, it is performing absolutely amazing. Um, I'll go ahead and show my video settings here. I'm using fast graphics and um, we're drawing this game at 650 by 1050. I, I could probably go higher, but um, I'll keep it at this for now. Um, I'm using the maximum smooth lighting um, and the brightness. I'll set that up actually. Um, and everything else is here. So if you want to use these settings, go ahead and do so. I actually definitely recommend you check out Optifine. Um, Optifine's a performance mod, which basically improves the performance of Minecraft along with giving you um, extra graphic settings that you can um, enable and disable. So I'll go ahead and go back to my game and I'll open up the um, F3 menu and as you can see um, it's not actually a stable 60 FPS considering this is pretty much 1080p 
Um, it's it's all right. So I'm just running around here, doing nothing, I guess. So as far as I know, High Sierra isn't actually the greatest at gaming. Um, I've actually run High Sierra um, with a few games on several Macs before and for some reason they just seem to crash quite a lot. Um, I've only crashed once um, on this Macbook and it was when I was debugging um, Half-Life 2. Um, for some reason it just randomly crashed. But um, that definitely does seem to be an issue on macOS High Sierra, so keep that in mind when you're playing games. Um, you might want to save um, a lot more. But um, yeah, this is Minecraft running at a very nice um, 128 FPS. Now I'm actually quite curious. Let's set the full screen resolution to the maximum. Ooh, okay. So this is the max. Uh, I can hear the fans slightly ramping up. It's running at 77 to 90 FPS. So now that we've got Minecraft out the way, let's check out Half-Life 2 Episode 1. Now, like I said before, I already tried this game on my MacBook. And um, I was actually surprised because I made this discovery. So I ran Half-Life 2 using the Source 2013 um, developer SDK thing. It didn't really run great on uh, macOS Ventura, which is what I usually main on this MacBook. It didn't really perform great at all. I had to set the resolution down to 900p and I had to basically put everything to low so the game looked like dog crap. I'll show you guys what I'm talking about right here. So my resolution is 960, but my advanced settings are actually, um, they're all right, they're like that medium. So um, I'm gonna load into my save from March the 15th and um, just take a look at that look how smooth this is running at I, like I'm just generally surprised because they've definitely done some uh, performance decreases on the Intel MacBooks and it's very obvious in this game like everything like even the physics are just so buttery and smooth on this now, like I said before, I just managed to get Steam running on macOS High Sierra and they did mention that they're going to be ending support by 2025 for these older macOS versions. So you probably won't be able to play these games unless someone releases a patch. But um, yeah, um, besides that, the game runs perfectly fine. Now games like Portal, um, Half-Life 2, Half-Life 2 Deathmatch, um, Half-Life 2 Episode 1, which is what we just tried, Half-Life 2 Episode 2 and Half-Life 2 Lost Coast, and I think, yeah, Deathmatch Source as well, and the original Half-Life will all run um, if you have a 32-bit version of macOS. Now, um, it says at the top that Steam will stop running on macOS 10.13 in zero days, but um, it's still running, which is really weird, but they're definitely going to end support soon for this. Team Fortress 2 also runs as well, um, I can't forget that. So let's jump to conclusions. Is macOS High Sierra still usable in 2024? In my honest opinion, I feel like this operating system is very quickly reaching the end of its life cycle. Like I mentioned before, pretty much every browser won't fully work on High Sierra. That's aided with the fact that a lot of websites also won't work. A clear example of this is Discord's website. Most of these elements won't work and I'm pretty sure the um, Discord app isn't supported anymore for macOS High Sierra. The elements seem to be very broken and if you press the login button, um, it'll just give me a white screen. Like that is literally it. And um, they have the Discord app, but um, that isn't really supported anymore. Like I can open it right now and it'll just tell me that I need um, macOS Catalina or later. Now, if I recall correctly, Firefox ESR might actually still support High Sierra. Apps like DaVinci Resolve, Photoshop, Spotify, and the majority of Steam games for Mac won't run on High Sierra. But if you want to run a more modernish macOS while keeping that similar High Sierra user interface, definitely check out macOS Catalina as it's just so much faster and it has a better UI and it still has some app support. If you like what you saw there, definitely consider subscribing as it helps me a lot and gives me a ton of motivation to make these videos for you guys.